Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can build a full stack automated product tagger application for Shopify using Gadget. I'm gonna build an automatic product tagger that's gonna allow merchants to enter keywords in an embedded front end. It'll check product descriptions for those keywords and if there's a match, write those keywords back to the products as tags. Out of the box, Gadget will give me webhook subscriptions to my Shopify data models, a historical data sync for those models that will automatically handle Shopify's API rate limits. I won't have to write a line of OAuth code that's gonna be managed for me. Gadget will also take care of Shopify's session token management and app bridge setup in the front end. Let's get started. Let's get started building our product tagger application. I'm going to create my new Gadget app. I am selecting my Shopify app type and I'll give my app a domain name. I'll just call this auto tag products and get started. And this will build my new Gadget app for me. I've got my Postgres database here. I've got my serverless node backend and my React front end powered by Vite. The first thing I'm gonna do is connect to Shopify. And this is gonna handle a lot of the Shopify boilerplate that you experience when building Shopify apps. I'm gonna connect through the partners dashboard because it's much more versatile for the reasons listed here. And I also want that embedded front end for this particular app. So I'm gonna to go to my partners dashboard, that's partners.shopify.com. I'm gonna go right to my apps page. It's one of my frequent flyers. So I've got the link ready to go. And I will create a new app and then create an app manually and give my app a name. I will call this auto tag products. Once this app is created, I can copy this client ID in secret back to gadget. So I'll do that now. So there's my client ID and here's my secret and I will press continue. On this page, I need to pick what Shopify API scopes and data models I want to include in my app because I want to read my product descriptions and then write tags back to my products. I need my product read and write scope and I will select my Shopify product data model. I get a setup summary that's showing me what I'm going to be getting when I complete this connection. So this connection does include webhook subscriptions and a historical data sync that manages Shopify's API rate limits for you. So I can see these are the webhooks that I am going to be subscribing to. That includes all of my product webhooks. These are the access scopes I have selected, and these are the models I'll be able to sync data to. And the key one is the Shopify product here. Shop and GDPR requests are gonna be added automatically for you. I'm happy with this setup, so I'll go ahead and press confirm. And now I need to copy this app URL and redirection URL back to my partner's app. So I'll start with my app URL, go back to my partner's page, click on configuration, and I'll paste the app URL and I'll do the same for the redirection URL. And we are good. So I will press save and release at the top here. And now I'm ready to install. I can go back to my overview page and select one of my development stores to actually test my app on and then I'm ready to start building. So I'll go ahead, select a store. I'm gonna choose my test with sample data store. You'll notice I haven't written a line of code yet, no auth code, Gadget's handling all of that for you. I can go ahead and click install right away. And my app will be installed on my development store. So Gadget is handling all the boilerplate setup for us, including front end things like setting up Shopify's app bridge, Shopify session tokens, don't need to deal with any of that. You're good to go out of the box. You can start developing right now. This is actually my front end app. You can see it's powered by routes slash index.jsx. So this is my React app. I can start editing it. So that was pretty quick. I'm gonna go back to my Gadget app and close this page. You see we were successfully connected to Shopify. I noticed that there are some changes that have been made to my app. So I have this File Explorer here, API is my backend, web is my front end, and I see that I have my Shopify data models included in my app now. So I see I have Shopify product. If I click on schema, these are all of the fields that are included on this data model. This is like columns in a Shopify product table in the database. So that is great. 
Now, what I need to do is create a custom data model that is gonna be used to store the keywords that merchants enter in their front end. So I can go ahead, click on this plus by models and create a new model called allowed tag. Excellent. This gives me some default fields that we create for you automatically. And then I can go ahead and add my own custom field. I'll just call it keyword. And this is a string field. I'm happy with that. I don't want a default. I can add a required validation so that every time I try and create an allowed tag record, if there's no keyword, it will fail. So that is fantastic. That was easy to do. You'll notice when I created my allowed tag model, I also got an actions folder with create, delete, and update files. And that's because when you create a data model and gadget, we also generate a CRUD API that you can use. So I'm just gonna go to my create action and I can see I have run and on success functions. Run is great for database level operations that happen pretty quickly. And on success is good for side effects or longer running code. You can check out our documentation for more on each. Off to the side here, we also have triggers and access control. So the triggers tell us how we can go ahead and fire this action. In this case, because it's a custom model, I can see it is an API endpoint and I get a little sample here. I can go api.allowedtag.create using the JavaScript client and that will actually fire this create action. That's pretty neat. I don't actually need to add any custom code to this create action right now. I instead am going to add some code to my Shopify product create action. And so just like my custom model, this is a code file I can modify. You will notice that the triggers are different for this file. So by default, it's only Shopify webhooks or that historical data sync that was added in. There's no API trigger. And that's because the data flow or relationship between Shopify and Gadget is one way. So we will pull data from Shopify to your Gadget database, but making changes in your Gadget database aren't automatically reflected back to Shopify. That's why we don't add that API trigger. I will show you how we can go ahead and update Shopify though, because we have a built-in API client through this connections object that's included in this high context parameter. I wanna go ahead and add some custom code to my Shopify product create and update actions that will go ahead and parse through my product descriptions, check to see if there are any matching keywords entered by merchants in my allowed tag data model. And if there are any matches, I wanna write those keywords back to my product as tags. I'm just gonna copy and paste a bit of code, show you how we can go ahead and do that. So my run function is the exact same. What has changed is my on success. I have my record, which is my Shopify product, and I'm checking to see if it has changed. So that is the product description, the body field. Gadget does have built-in change detection, which is very handy in the update action, not so much on create, but we can check and see only run this code if the actual product description has changed. Here we're just using a set and a regular expression to pull out the unique words of my product description. Next, we're doing the same thing for my allowed tags. And you can see what we're doing is we're using this api.allowedtag.findmany. So that's our read call on our allowed tag data model. And then just mapping over the keywords. And you can see API is one of the parameters included in this high context object here. We get the overlap in final tags. Once again, we're just using a set and some filtering operations to get the overlap between my allowed tags and new tags. Gadget has a built-in logger. So we're just using this to log all three of our arrays. And then we're using this connections object to get the current Shopify client. So that will be connections.shopify.current. If it exists, we're using this API client to update this product. So you can see we're going shopify.product.update, passing in the record ID, which is just the Shopify product ID, and sending in final tags. So that is fantastic. This Shopify client is really just the Shopify API node package. So you will notice you have a package.json file here, and you see Shopify API node right there. So if you are looking for the API for that client, you can just go ahead and check out the NPM package. Gadget is just a node project, so you can install any dependencies you want. 
That's great. So this will run on a create action, but I actually wanna share this code between my create and my update actions. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a utility file here. And I'll just create it at my Shopify product level. I'll just call this utils.js. And I'm just gonna paste in that same code. It's just gonna be exported as an apply tags function. And then I can go ahead and update both my create and update actions. So let's go to create, paste that here. You see we're importing apply tag from utils and then just calling it in our on success function. And I will do the exact same thing in my update. There we go. So now that custom code should run every time I go ahead and create a new product in Shopify or update an existing product. Let's go ahead and try adding a keyword and then testing this out without a front end. So I can go ahead, go to my allowed tag, create action and click run action. And this opens my GraphQL playground. I can go ahead and run my create action to add a keyword to my database. So I'll just call this sweater. I'll run my action. We see success was true. It gives me my allowed tag. And if I go back and click on my data page, I see that sweater has been added to my database. That is awesome. Now what I can do is go over to my store admin, click on products, and I will add a product just called sweater. This is a cozy sweater is my product description because we're parsing my description, not my title. I need to do that. I can go ahead and save this product. It'll fire that product create webhook and that will run my custom code and add that sweater tag to my product. So if I go back to gadget, check the logs, I see we get the log applying final tags to my product. Final tags has the sweater object. And if I go ahead and refresh my product page here, I see that it is tagged with sweater. So that is fantastic. Now I can go ahead and build a front end in order to actually add these keywords. I am once again, just gonna copy and paste some code and very quickly walk through it. My front end is in my web folder. I have some default things set up, including an API client that is specific to my app. That's auto tag products, which is pretty groovy. That's how I'm gonna call my backend API. I have my main app and routing set up in this components app file. And in routes, I have index and about pages. So I will just paste over my index. If I go back to my store and go to auto tag products, we will see our new front end. I get this permission denied error, which is great. This appears because when I added my custom model, we're not automatically gonna give merchants access to the, that model's API. So I actually have to go ahead and enable access on that role. I can go back to gadget, go to the, my access control folder and click on permissions. And then for the Shopify app users role, that's what's gonna be granted to merchants in that embedded app context. I can go ahead and give them access to my allowed tag API. So now if I go ahead and refresh this page, perfect, I see sweater is there. So I can go ahead, add some additional keywords. I can go ahead and delete keywords. That works great. Let's take a quick look at the code and see how it works. Go back to my index page. So you can see I am using my API client, got it imported down here. And this is just built with standard Shopify Polaris components. When you create your Shopify connection, Polaris is installed automatically as well as Polaris icons, and you can use those in your app. I'm using an AppBridge React component, the title bar. And I'm also using some hooks from the Gadget Inc. React package. So this is just useful hooks that you can use to interact with your API. I will very quickly walk through them, but check out our documentation for more information. I can use the use find many hook on my allowed tag model to read my existing tags. That's what is powering this existing keyword section. I get data fetching and error. Data are my return tags. Fetching is a Boolean I can use to show a loading spinner and error are any errors I encountered. We saw that when we hit that permissions issue. I also have a use action hook, and this is what I'm using to call my delete action when I go ahead and click that X on the tag in the UI and it removes them. 
And I fire this with this delete tag function. So I also get data fetching an error as the first returned object. And I get a function that I can use to actually call this action. So you can see I have defined this remove tag callback and in it, I am calling delete tag and just passing the ID of the tag to delete. That's all that's required to make use of that use action hook. I'm also using use action form here. And this is just a handy little wrapper around the React hook form library. I love use action form because it's managing all of my form state for me. You notice I don't have any React use state hooks. My entire form state is handled by use action form. So I have a bunch of different pieces here. The important one is submit, as I have the submit built in, and I am just calling that on my form submit down here. This is just a Polaris form. I'm also calling reset to go ahead and empty my form input. Because Polaris is a controlled component library, I'm also using this controller that I've imported from my Gadget Inc. React package. I'm setting the name to keyword, which is the name of the field on my API.allowed tag model passing in a control that I also defined as part of my use action form hook. And in the render function, I am just drawing a Polaris text field. And that's all that is needed. That is what is powering this front end. So that was an end-to-end -end Shopify app build using Gadget. I can go ahead and I can make this multi-tenant if I want. We do have the ability to check out a written tutorial if you want to build a public app for the Shopify app store. As it is, this app would be good for a custom app developed for a single merchant. Now I can go ahead and run our historical data sync to bring in all of my existing Shopify products and tag them if they have the sweater keyword. I will actually add another keyword, super, just so we can tag one of my existing snowboard products. So I'll go back to my gadget app, click on settings, plugins, Shopify. I'm going to go to installs and I will click sync. And this will sync all of my historical product data into my gadget app. It is successful. If I go and check out my Shopify product data, I see I have all of my products here now. And if I go to my products in my store and I check out my complete snowboard I know that this has super in the description and I can see it has been tagged with super. So that works for historical products as well. That was our end-to-end -end Shopify app build. If you have any questions, check out our documentation, including the written tutorial for this app and ask in our developer Discord. Until next time, I hope you keep building more and coding less with Gadget.